Shabbat shalom. When we finish a unit of text study, it is traditional to proclaim Hadran Alach, we will return to you. At the heart of this declaration is the personification of whatever unit of texts we are studying. We speak to the texts that we leave behind saying, we will return to you and you will return to us. Our mind is on you, and your mind is on us. We will not forget you, and you will not forget us. Not in this world, and not in the world to come. Although this tradition is related to Talmud study, as we just finished the book of Exodus, this feels particularly relevant to Torah study as well. We will return to the stories of the Exodus again and again at our Seder tables, and during our prayers, when we meditate on what it is to be enslaved and what it means to be free. How does our freedom inform our responsibility to others? Who is in need of our strength? Who needs our care? Who is in need of our kindness? Who is in need of our empathy and compassion? There is a sacred call to answer. This week, we return to the book of Vayikra, Leviticus. Vayikra means, and he called. It begins, Vayikra el Moshe vayedaber Adonai elav. God called to Moses and spoke to him. The Torah is generally a very terse text. It doesn't use two words when it only needs one. And so the opening verse of Vayikra could have read, God said to Moses, but instead it reads first God called Moses and then God said to him. Our sages determined that there must be a reason why this verse starts with what seems like a superfluous detail. And God called Vayikra. Furthermore, the word Vayikra is written on the Torah scroll in a mysterious way. The final letter, Aleph, of the word is written in tiny, tiny script, much smaller than the other letters. Aleph is a silent letter. It has no sound, but it is there. The letter Aleph is somewhat mystical. It is an invitation to consider the world behind the world. The holy spark calling to us, Vayikra, from deep inside of ourselves. The Zohar implies that this mysterious Aleph is a hint that God is speaking to Moses from the interior, from the depths. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs writes, the small Aleph is almost invisible. Do not expect the Torah is intimating that the presence of God in history will always be as clear and as unambiguous as it was during the exodus from Egypt and the division of the Red Sea. For much of the time, it will depend on your own sensitivity. For those who look, it will be visible. For those who listen, it can be heard. But first, you have to look and listen. Vayikra is the language of calling, being called to live in concert with the holy spark within us. Vayikra was the word used to call Moses up to the top of the mountain to receive the commandments. Vayikra is the language of the angels, the kara ze el ze ve amar, kadosh. The angels call out to one another, proclaiming, Holy is God. Vayikra means being called. What are we called to do? Who are we being called to become? Who needs a kind word from us right now? Who needs our help? What internal spark are we ignoring? The response will never be the same for one person as it is for another, for we aren't the same. 
Each one of us has our own tasks to complete and goals to achieve in making the world a better place. Each of us has a contribution that is uniquely ours to give. No other person can replace any one of us. This parasha is the first of many that will go into great detail about the korbanot, the sacrifices. But the word for sacrifice comes from the root to mean drawing close. We are called to draw close and to make personal sacrifices. We are called to show ourselves, to rise, to be counted, to be present, to be there, to offer ourselves to others. Giving is an expression of freedom. Giving can set us free. The voice of God calls out from Sinai each and every day to you and to me and to all of us. And as Rabbi Joshua, Abraham Joshua Heschel explains, all that is left to us is the choice to answer or to not respond. In a few weeks, we will revisit the, the story of Exodus at our Seder tables. Our freedom obligates us towards responsibility. This central Jewish tenant is always in our hearts and minds. While we may have moved on to read the book of Leviticus, the Exodus story is always at the center of our Jewish consciousness. Hadranalach, we will return to you and you will return to us. Our mind is on you and your mind is on us. We will not forget you and you will not forget us, not in this world and not in the world to come. Shabbat Shalom.